So the game I'm playing today is called Thoth, or Thoth, I'm not sure what the official pronunciation is, and it's not like I care anyway, but, uh, I'm not even sure how to describe this game, and you know what? For the first time ever, I may have actually stumbled across a game that I might not even be able to explain to you guys even if I was demonstrating it to you. I came across this game some time ago, I don't remember when, it was probably like a year ago at the very least. What I can tell you about this game is that it's a twin-stick shooter, but it's a very abstract one at that, and I don't know, man, this game is just impossible to describe with words. Like, I, I don't know what this is. And there's no real premise to it either, aside from kill enemies in order to proceed to the next level, and then after about 64 levels, it just ends. Well, it doesn't just end, there's also this weird ending cinematic that you get at the end of the game, which I'm not going to go into detail here, because I'd rather not spoil it right now. But I can tell you that it makes about as much sense as the game, which is nearly zero. So Thoth was initially released in 2016. It was developed by Carlson Games, aka Yeppe Carlson. That name may or may not ring a bell to some of you, Yeppe Carlson is the developer of 140, an indie platformer that I did a video on about a year ago. Carlson also works as a game designer at Playdead, the indie studio that brought us fantastic titles such as Limbo and Inside, of which Carlson was a designer on both games. For Limbo in particular, he was the designer of most of the game's puzzles, and Thoth is the second commercial game that he has released in his solo career. Now, unlike one 40, Thoth was not published by Carlson himself. Instead, he enlisted the help of Tim Schafer's studio Double Fine to distribute this game and get it out to the public. And I can't say I'm too surprised that Double Fine published this, because in recent years, Double Fine have become known for publishing a lot of really bizarre indie games, and this one is nowhere near an exception. So with all that information out of the way now, let's take a look at the actual game here. So first of all, this is the level select screen. What exactly do do all the numbers mean? Well, as you may have been able to tell since this is the level select screen, clicking on any of these numbers will start you off at that level. Although Thoth is kind of weird in the sense that it counts levels backwards, so the first level is actually level 64, and the final level is level 1. So there are 64 levels in total, and all of the levels are divided into 16 sets comprised of 4 levels each. Every level set introduces their own unique gameplay mechanic. And some of the later sets not only introduce new mechanics, but also combine previous ones for even more of a challenge. I will say that the game is actually not as difficult as I thought it would be. Thoth was designed to be a brutally difficult game, so much so that the difficulty had to be lowered in later versions. The game was definitely a lot harder than it is now. Also, if you click on these little circles up here, this will change the game mode, so you can select between either single player or co-op, you can actually play co-op on your own. Co-op is still technically a one-player mode, or it's like a mode that you can play with either one or two players. Co-op also has a unique mechanic of its own, which I'm not gonna get into right now, I'll probably do that once I finish the game. Thoth is a pretty short experience overall. Most of the levels can be completed in just like five to ten seconds. The game is incredibly fast-paced, so I'll probably be able to get through this in one sitting. And with that said, let's just go to the first level here, which is level 64. Yeah, this circle that's moving around the screen, by the way, that's my cursor, if you weren't able to tell that already. So this little circle right here is, I, I guess, your ship. It can move around in not that many directions. There's only, like, Eight, eight different directions that it can move in, at least if you're using the arrow keys. I do believe you can use, yeah, you can use either WASD or the arrow keys. I do like how it tells you the level that you're currently on in the background. You can see that uh, there's a giant 64 in the background, which means I'm on level 64. So your ship can fire. You can left click in order to do that. You'll notice that you slow down as you're firing. Right now, the enemies are pretty slow. They will try to target you directly. They just kind of float slowly towards you. Of course, you can't touch them, otherwise you will die, and most of the enemies in this game are just simple geometric shapes. The art style definitely reminds me a lot of 140. You can tell just from looking at this picture right here that this is definitely a, a, a Yeppe Carlson game, if you're even remotely familiar with any of his works. Let's try shooting one of the enemies. So, 
the way that uh, you kill the enemies in this game is, well, just like most twin-stick shooters, you just shoot at them, and eventually you drain all the color out of them. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So, the enemies don't exactly die in this game. When you do kill one, it spawns... I guess a ghost version of the enemy that you just killed. They're completely void of color, you can actually see outer space inside of them. They move a lot quicker, and they'll just give chase to you until you kill the other enemy right here. So essentially, you have to turn all the enemies on screen into ghosts, and then after that, you'll just move on to the next stage. It's pretty simple. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I also like how it how it counts down all of the uh, stages as well. It starts off pretty simple at first. You just have this wall in the center of uh, the playing field or or the battlefield, I guess you could say. I don't know, whatever the heck you want to call it, the screen. Just just to, just to make it simpler for people who aren't who aren't as well educated in English. I mean, to be fair, I'm not that well educated in English. I mean, how how many times do I use the word basically and actually, or just how many times do I use like incredibly simple adverbs in all of my videos? Good lord, I'm like the worst English speaker on this planet. I mean, I am Canadian, so maybe it's not that surprising, especially since I come from a, a, a province that is very francophone populated. But whatever. Whatever. It's not even relevant to what exactly we're doing here. So, we already completed the first set, by the way. So, like I said, it's just broken down into, uh, 16 sets of four levels. So we already completed the first one. The second set introduces walls, which is not the most unique mechanic ever. I mean, you know, every, every, every video game has walls. Uh, the one at the very end of the second set, or the last level of the second set, there's just a purple wall that moves slowly towards you. It moves so slowly, though, that you'll definitely be able to kill the boss before it even reaches you. So, just slow as molasses. That's a joke that I'm totally not overusing in any of my videos. So the third set right here, you have these blue enemies that will shoot cores at you? That, that's the best way I can describe them. They're very bouncy. They tend to bounce off the walls quite a bit. And they can become kind of dangerous in that regard, because, yeah, well, they're they're incredibly bouncy, so they, they constantly change their trajectory. Okay, so, this is also another mechanic that I have to explain. So this was not in the game when it initially launched. So, whenever you die in any of the levels, you do get a second chance to complete the level. So you have two lives, essentially. However, if you die once and then respawn, all of the walls in the level will turn into lava. So, even though you can respawn once, there is a little bit of a catch to it. You need to make sure that you don't hit the walls, otherwise you are going to die. Now, if you do end up losing both of your lives in any of the levels, except for the first level of any given set, then you will end up going back to the first level of the set. And also, if I do end up dying on the first level of a set, it will not activate the second chance mechanic, so the walls will not turn into lava, it'll just simply reset the level. Sometimes I like doing that on purpose, like deliberately killing myself, so all the walls can turn into lava just to give myself a little bit more of a challenge. There are some levels where it's, it's still pretty, uh, pretty easy and pretty straightforward to just avoid all the walls, because usually it's just the outside wall that ends up changing, and not really anything else. Okay, I am kind of doing a piss poor job right now though, because I'm actually, I'm not doing this on purpose here. Like, I'm not purposely trying to get myself killed. Oh geez. Yeah, we have rotating walls as well. Uh, this set right here, the fourth set, introduces a mechanic where when you kill an enemy, the wall will activate. I should not have done that while I was on top of the wall. That was not a good move in the slightest. Oh god, okay, deactivate this because I think I want to get to the other side. Yeah, so you really have to, like, try and avoid them here because they do get very fast after a while. So, what you gotta do is that you have to take out the old... You gotta, you gotta give them the old, old bait and switch. You gotta get the old bait and switch tactics out here. That's, that's how you, that's how you beat this game. That's, that's the key to beating Thoth, guys. You gotta give them the bait and switch, and then you just gotta outrun them as fast as you possibly can. The fifth set introduces a mechanic that I personally like to call black holes. So these guys will expand outwards, and they expand outwards infinitely. They'll eventually consume the entire screen because of that, so you need to try and kill them before that happens. So let's just shrink them down to size. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Get away from me, please. Okay, thank you very much. My reaction to that was a little bit delayed, but whatever. It's fine. It's all cool. It's cool. I got you, fam. I got your back. And actually, that's the end of the fifth set already. So the sixth set... 
like I said, this game is incredibly fast-paced. So you have some enemies here that are bound by chains. Usually the chains will activate when you kill another enemy, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. I'm not entirely sure why some of the enemies start flashing after you kill one of them. Oh god, okay. There was absolutely nowhere for me to run there. Oh good god. How did that not kill you? Oh gee, oh wow. Good thing he bounced off the wall, Other otherwise that definitely would have swung right back at me and, and just snuffed me out. Oh good lord. Oh good lord. Oh good lardy Lou. Okay, kill him. I, I don't know if the black chains can still kill me, but I'm not taking my chances. Not taking my chances on that. Yeah, then right here it's gonna combine mechanics, where it's gonna shoot cores at me as well. Oh my god! Holy crap, the tight squeezes. Tight squeezes for days. Okay. So that's it for the 6th set. Now the 7th set, you'll also notice that the palette color of uh, all of the levels is changing too, with each individual set. So they have their own unique palette swaps. Very nice indeed. Of course, you can't change them manually, which kind of sucks, but this one right here, uh, the seven set, the mechanic that it introduces here are these, like, spawners. Whenever you shoot an enemy, it will spawn a chain that binds them together, so the chain only appears when you're actually shooting the enemy. Again, it's pretty easy to take care of. Yeah, and then you have the black hole enemies. So this is around the point where it starts combining all of the previous mechanics, and, uh, yeah, there's gonna be no way to kill the black hole now, so I just gotta... Uh, take him out before it consumes the entire screen. I kind of have to be smart with this one. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna break off into little pieces. I was not smart with that one. That was not a smart play in the slightest. Oh good god. Oh good. Okay. Well, that was that. Uh, okay. Stop for a moment because I'm I'm saying the word okay a lot again because of my freaking speech patterns. Actually, funny thing about that. This is my second attempt at uh, recording this this thought video because. The first time around, I, I decided to scrap it because I just absolutely hated how it came out. The main thing that I hated about the first uh, session I did of this was that I, d there were too many uses of the phrase, as you can see. There was just way too many of them, and I know that's a phrase I tend to use a lot in my videos, and generally I personally don't have a problem with it, but I used it so often the last time I attempted to record this that it just... It, it made me cringe so hard that I, I couldn't even watch the damn video. I just, I just couldn't. Also, I think I'm gonna try and take these guys out from a distance. There we go, that worked a lot better. Yeah, I just couldn't stand how many times I, I kept using that, that saying, though, so I just decided to scrap it and try to do it again. So, the 8th set right here, the unique mechanic this time is that you have these enemies that only move vertically. They only move from top to bottom. They also move a lot faster when you shoot them, and obviously they will move a lot faster when you kill them outright. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm just gonna, like, yeah, shrink you down to size without actually killing you. That's the only way, yeah, that's the only way I can continuously shrink you. Here we go. Very good. And then we can just take him out right now. Very nice indeed. So we're almost halfway through the game. Yeah, and then the these guys are gonna be bound by chains. Well, I guess, I guess if they're, uh, yeah, if they're oriented horizontally like this, then they'll move left and right. Oh, god. Oh, god, are they kind of following me? Oh, they are kind of following me. No, they're definitely following me. Okay, get out of here, boys. Get out of here, boys. Oh, wow. These guys almost nudged me. They almost touched me inappropriately. Not gonna let that happen. Yeah, it's also a matter of trying to figure out which enemies you should take out first, considering they all move faster when they die, or they become ghosts, they enter ghost mode. So, another thing you have to think about is, which enemies do you want to take out first? Like, do you want to take out the giant ones, or do you want to take out maybe, maybe just the little ones that only move, like, up and down? Like, like the ones that only move in, like, two different directions? That's something you need to take into consideration when you play this game. Also, the unique mechanic of the ninth set here is that you have these, uh, mobile black holes, as I like to call them. Whenever you kill an enemy, they will expand outwards, just like that, and then when you kill another enemy, they contract. So, again, you have to get as far away from them as possible so that they don't hit you. So, it, it's it's ideal to take the enemies out from a distance, in this case. Also, you, once again, you have the walls that switch on and off, except this time they're green. So, I guess it, it's a little bit different. And I, it keeps things fresh a little bit, I guess. Okay, I don't want to go here. I do not want to go here. I think I want to go up this way. Yeah, there we go. And, th and another thing you can do is try to kill two enemies at the same time, so that way they don't expand outwards at all. They retain their original their original size, 
That's the word I was looking for. Very good indeed. Yeah, I just got some more walls. And that's also at the end of the 9th set. So the 10th set now. Pretty grim. It's uh, just a grayscale. Just a great grayscale color scheme. Also, there is a little bit of a cheese tactic for uh, this stage in particular. Sometimes when you move to the bottom right corner of the screen, they can't even hit you. Okay, well that one somehow managed to, even though I was about to take the other asshole out. Yeah, if, if you move like this... Yeah, then, uh, wow, that guy actually got stuck there and trapped me, but, yeah, sometimes you can just stay at the bottom right of the screen and the guys can't even hit you. you. Also have these rotating walls, which I absolutely hate. Oh, good god. Oh, good god. Okay, there we go. Good, good dodges. Pulling out some sweet dodges right now. Sweet maneuvers. This level is fairly simple right here because, yeah, you only have enemies that move vertically. The only thing you need to uh, keep in mind are the cores that they shoot at you, because they do bounce around quite a bit, they have a tendency of doing that. But other than that, this is honestly one of the easier levels in the game. And then this is just, uh, a, a, I think, a repeat of one of the previous levels that we played. Yeah, this, this other guy that once again shoots out multiple cores, but you also have uh, some other enemies that you have to avoid at the same time. Again, just take the giant guy out in uh, five hits, and that'll be it. You can then move on. Uh, where do I want to go here? Oh, gee. I, I, I don't think I want to go this way. Oh, I definitely don't want to go this way. Okay, yeah, just just keep keep on shooting him. This is, this is the last hit anyway. This is the final blow. Very nice. That's it for the 10th set. At least I think I'm counting this correctly. I'm pretty sure we're on set number 10. Well, we're on set number 11 now because I just beat it. So... This is a pretty cool mechanic right here, though. The 11th set introduces clones. So whenever you kill an enemy, it fires out a clone. I don't want to kill it there. Okay, well, it doesn't matter anyway, because I died. So yeah, it shoots out. Holy crap! Can I stop sucking in a bag of balls, please? They shoot out clones. You see that flashing circle over there? That's where you'll spawn once you kill one of the enemies. So what you want to do, what you want to do ideally, is not spawn when there's an enemy overlapping the flashing circle, because that is where you will end up spawning and you will end up dying as a result. Like for instance, yeah, I didn't want to do that right there. Oh, jeez. But it is kind of good, though, because it at least teleports you away from them and get as far away from them as possible. And then this is the boss of set number 11. I don't... Oh, get... A, okay, yeah. I don't, I don't want to spawn on the wall. That's, that's very bad. Oh, that's also very bad that I... Oh, wow. Okay, that's a good a good dodge. Oh shit, am I screwed? Okay, no, I'm not screwed. Hang on a second. I moved out of the way in time. Okay, get the other crap out of the way too. Damn it. Okay, well, this is gonna suck even more now because all the things are made out of- Okay, I wasn't even paying attention there. Oh god. Oh lord. Oh, that's a good sweep right there. Like, I, I swept right under him. Is that even the correct term? I don't think that's how you use the word sweep. I'm pretty sure that that's, that's not how it works. That's not how English works in the slightest. I'm not sure if I want to be close to him. Yeah, because he fires four of these, four of these cores. And he fires them in four different directions. His movement is a little bit awkward, though. Like, it's a little bit all over the place. But we still ended up getting him. The 12th set right here, the uh, mechanic here is that you have these walls that only activate for about a second. So if you want to move through them, well, you have to go very fast. You gotta be super duper quick about it. So yeah, this is like another one of these games where you have to keep constantly moving. There's never a point where you can stop. Like, otherwise, you're you're gonna screw yourself over like I'm about to right here. Oh, jeez. Wait, I can see him in my peripheral vision. There we go. We're already on the last uh, level of this set right here. Let's hope to God that I don't screw it up. Oh, jeez. Wow. Another tight squeeze. Okay. Get the other guy over here. I don't really care about the other... Oh my god, dude. I was gonna say I didn't care about about going through the wall, but... God. Yeah, this is... See, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if this would also be a, a best game for commentating, because you really need to have a high level of concentration in order to beat this. Like, if you wanna, if you wanna, like, excel at this game, you can't be talking at any, at any point in time. Like, you have, your, your focus has to be on this game, like, 100%. But, in this set, right here, which I believe is set... Wait, I think this is actually set 14. Yeah, I think I was counting this incorrectly, but, okay, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Great. Like that, okay, I, I'm apparently doing very good at that. See what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't commentate over this. It's, it's so difficult, because now I'm not even paying attention to any of the enemies, but what I was trying to say... 
The mechanic here is that, again, you have the walls, but the enemies can pass through the walls to come out to the other side. So, for instance, if they leave the screen from the right side, they come out the left. That also applies to the cores. I don't like this set, honestly. I personally despise this set. I especially hate the level that we're coming up to right here. So, level 13... This, this level's garbage. This level is just honestly a dumpster fire. The, the biggest dumpster fire planet Earth has ever seen. Okay, well actually, it's kind of going well right now. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, the stress. Oh god, the stress. Yeah, see? They go from the bottom, they wind up at the top, vice versa. Well, I mean, there might have been a way for me to actually get out of that. These guys are smart. They know exactly where to go and where I am and how exactly that correlates to time and space. What am I even talking about right now? Wow. Okay, well, actually, that wasn't too bad. I only died, like, once that time. So that was actually my best performance on that particular level. Uh, wait, no. This is set 14. No, I think I was- I think I was counting that correctly before. Okay, whatever. I'm just confused. This is the point in the video where I just get hopelessly confused and I say all sorts of mind-numbingly retarded stuff. That makes, like, no sense whatsoever. But the gimmick of this level, or this set, I should say, that you have these rotating dots. They will expand when you kill an enemy. They will contract when you kill a second enemy. And what I want to do here is that I want to try and get as far away from them as possible, just like that. Very nice indeed. Yeah, so I don't, like, you, you, there, there is, like, a little bit of a safe space, because as you can see, it doesn't go all the way around. So you can be, like, in, in the the middle right there. Like, you can stay in the center if you want, that's not re recommended, or I, I at least don't recommend that you do that, because y you need to keep constantly moving in this game, like, you have to, otherwise you are going to die, unless somehow you can just absolutely cheese things, and, and somehow the enemies don't end up hitting you. But the gimmick of uh, these levels right here is that there is this bar that moves up and down whenever you kill an enemy, Right here, you have to try and kill two enemies at the same time, otherwise the bar at the top of the screen will come around and knock your face off. I was somehow able to do it there. Okay, I'm gonna have to concentrate a little bit. I think I want to go to the other side in order to accomplish this. Okay, very good. As long as these guys are, like, bouncing bouncing off the walls like that, then that's, that's ideal for me. Very nice. I had a really hard time when I was recording this, uh... Like, like in the last session, on, on that particular set right there, because I died, like, at least maybe three or four times. It, it's definitely one of the... Well, actually, I wouldn't say it's one of the harder sets. See, it, it's kind of strange, because the game's difficulty seems to fluctuate wildly. It never seems to stay consistent, especially with these levels right here. Yeah, you had these, like, weird snake enemies, these little snake-like enemies that you had to, that you had to kill. You had, to, you had to destroy, like, each individual piece of them. It's actually not the hardest uh, level in the entire game. It's honestly one of the easier ones, I would argue. Yeah, then you just have, again, some clones. Okay, I really did not know where I was supposed to go there. You know what? I'm gonna clone myself right now. Actually, will, will this work if I... Oh, okay. I get it. It, it also works when I'm hitting the, the clone enemies. Or, or the core shooting enemies. Okay, move out of the way, please, and thank you, and thank you, oh, fuck. Okay, I'm getting a little bit, uh, getting a little bit nervous now. Yeah, again, when you shoot this guy, he's just bound by chains. This is, I, I think, like, the same boss fight from, uh, the, the grayscale set, as I like to call it. But yeah, the only difference here is that when you shoot him, he's bound by chains. He moves so slowly anyway. Look at this, not even, not even an issue. Not even an issue. He's so slow. Slow on his feet. God, I think, I think he does get larger when you shoot him, though. That's the only thing that kind of worries me about him. I think we'll take him out. There we go. Very nice indeed. And then finally, guys, we are on the last level. And to be honest, this is on a little bit anticlimactic, because this is basically like, like the recycled uh, boss from set 2. So again, you just uh, blow him off piece by piece. That sounds really strange. Don't think about that sentence too much. That sentence that I just uttered, that came directly out of my mouth hole. But yeah, you have to eliminate him piece by piece. All the pieces start charging at you, but... Honestly, this is probably the easiest level in the game. That's why I say it's anticlimactic. And there you go, guys. That That's it. Game's done. So, yeah. I mean, to be fair, this game nearly gave me a heart attack when I, when I beat it the first time. But... 
I mean, you, you, you definitely get used to it after a while, like after you've played it a few times, it becomes pretty smooth sailing from there on out. This is just the intro, or sorry, the outro, and it's just showing you, like, enemies that you've beaten in previous sets, along with all the different color palettes. Just listen to this music. Here, hang on a second. I'm gonna let you guys listen to the music here, and I'm gonna shut my mouth for a brief moment. Yeah, so there you go, guys. That is Thoth. We beat the whole game. Yeah, and I, I'm just realizing that I don't think I commented on the game's music at any point in this video, but the music when you're playing the game, it's mostly uh, very ambient, like dark ambience. It's pretty creepy to listen to. I do believe the game's soundtrack is available on Steam. But just hang on a moment because I'm not I'm not done with this video yet. We're not through with this just yet because I want to talk about these levels over here. So when you beat the game once, this level set in the very top right corner will unlock. So these two sets right here are randomized level sets. The first option consists of 8 levels, and the second option consists of 12. Now in order to beat these moeds, you have to complete all of the levels in one sitting. You can't die once, or I guess you can't lose a level, otherwise you will venture all the way back to the start. And because it's random, you don't get the same level layout every time. It's always different. I do believe these level sets also have their own unique type of enemy. So let me go and uh, load up the uh, 8 random level set right here. Actually, this is... Already this is... Uh, okay, well, already I'm sucking, which is fantastic. It's always good when you just start sucking instantly. I was gonna say, that was like a, a, a type of uh, level that I've already seen. Yeah, okay, hang on. Hang on a moment. Yeah, you got a, got a black hole in the center. So yeah, all of the levels here are just completely random. Again, you just... Well, you have to get through the entire level. Yeah, you also have the uh, second chance mechanic here as well, so it still retains this from the previous levels. Jeez, I'm not doing very- well, I, I, I mean, I'm not planning on unbeating this one anyway, because I just like to show this off, so if I just continuously die here, you'll notice that it keeps loading a different level layout every single time, although they do begin to repeat themselves after a while. Because it's not, like, true randomness. I do believe it It takes it from, like, from, like, predetermined level layouts. But in order to, I guess, keep things fresh, it just... It, it sometimes mirrors them. Like, it'll rotate them so that the uh, starting positions of the enemies are different every single time. Or sometimes the walls might be oriented a little bit differently. But it's not, like true randomness. It kind of just shuffles in between predetermined level layouts. I, I think that's a more accurate description of what the randomized level sets are. And if I can find this, like, unique enemy that I'm, that I'm referring to, it's not here. Right, so it's this enemy right here. So it breaks off into four separate pieces, and it does that instantly. You don't even have to shoot it. Bit of a tougher enemy to take out, but, yeah, not the most difficult in the world. I mean, the, the individual pieces are a lot easier to kill, because, you know, they're, they're a lot smaller, so they have less health as a result. And also, if you leave the enemies alone for a while, they do regenerate their health. So that's why you have to you have to constantly shoot at them. That way you deplete your, their health the fastest. I saw exactly where you were going, buddy. Don't think for a moment. Don't even think for a moment. Your bullets don't collide with the ghost enemies. And you will have some cases where the ghost enemies will actually try to hide behind other enemies. Okay, well, this is not exactly what I mean, but okay. There was no possible way I could have I could have gotten through that. He was just blocking me the entire time. That was just a dick move. It's 
what that was. But yeah, the ghost enemies or void enemies, whatever you want to call them, they don't collide with your bullets. So sometimes, it, like if there's enemies, if there's like enemies that are still alive, like solid enemies that are hiding behind them, well, because the bullets will just pass through the ghost enemies, you can still hit them. So it's kind of like what I'm doing right here, actually. So there's that, and yeah, also as you can see, the, the boss that you, that you, uh, encounter is also not the same every single time. So it, it does still work like the normal levels in which every four levels there will be a boss, but the entire set is actually comprised of eight levels, so it still, it still counts as just one set, so essentially this one has two bosses. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna try and, uh, and beat this though. I'm not gonna try and beat this. Yeah, but now, now that I was on the second part of the set, if I die, I still end up going back to the very beginning. Then we also have the 12 randomized set, or, or the randomized set that consists of 12 levels, which has some uh, other obstacles. This is just like a more difficult version of it. So you have the rotating dots that expand outwards and contract when you kill an enemy. You have the walls, of course. You have the uh, spawners that spawn the chains. You have the clones, of course. You fight a boss every four levels, so this set essentially has three bosses. I could at the very least attempt to take this one out. Not right there, though. That would be a very bad move. Okay, well, that was just a bad move altogether. You know what? Fine. Yeah, and you also have the uh, enemies that just only move on one particular axis depending on their orientation. Again, it's just it's just randomly generated stuff. Although to be fair, even this mode gets a little bit repetitive after a while because then you you begin to realize that it's just recycling the same layouts over and over. It, it's just shuffled essentially. So, that's that's all that this game mode is. And then this uh this other 64 right here. I believe when you unlock this one, you have to beat every single level in the game again, but you have to do it in just one run. If you end up losing, then you go all the way back to the start. I think that might be what the uh, 32 option right below it is as well, or this could also be randomized levels. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Very quickly, I could go into uh, co-op mode here. So you can play this with either one or two players, and the gimmick here if you're playing with a partner, is that when your partner dies, they too will become a ghost. They will also begin chasing after you, but they speed up very quickly, to the point where you won't even be able to outrun them. The key to getting through this is to try and kill all of the enemies as quickly as possible before they get to your partner. So you gotta try and make sure that you clear out all the enemies before your partner speeds up enough so that they actually have a chance of, uh, of coming, coming at you, like coming to get you. Oh, good god. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it here! Oh, wow. Like, right before it touched me as well. And I think this also works as, uh... Okay, yeah, because I... If, if I end up dying, yeah, then I also turn into a, a ghost myself, so my co-op partner will stay alive, but then, yeah, that's that's just gonna be it for that. So I guess if you just want a little bit more of a challenge out of the game, you can try this mode by yourself. If the normal game mode was uh, too easy for you, then you can try this out with just one player and see how you fare. I, I do believe there is an achievement for uh, beating the co-op mode with only one player, if I'm not mistaken. But I think it also requires that you beat all of the levels in one sitting without actually failing. And honestly, I couldn't be bothered with that, because that's just a waste of my time, and I don't well, I, I don't feel like investing time into that, I should say. I mean, it might not necessarily be a waste of time, but if you want to 100% the game, yeah, you're gonna have to do that. And I think I'm gonna leave the video here, guys, because that's all I have to say about Thoth. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show off. That's practically the entire game for you. Just 64 levels of God even knows what. I have no clue what was happening this entire time. It's got style for sure. Substance, maybe not as much. I mean, I am kind of disappointed that the game was so short. I would have especially liked it if there were more levels that uh, tinkered with some of the other mechanics that were introduced in the earlier sets, because for instance, the snake enemy is that we encounter on level four right here. So I'll just shoot them so that they can spawn. I wish there were more levels that that had these kinds of enemies right here, because level 4 is the only level where these kinds of enemies even spawn, so I would have liked it if maybe there were more enemies like this in like, in like more levels. Like maybe if there was an expansion release for this that added more levels into the game and had these kinds of enemies in it to provide even more of a challenge, and also combining this with even more 
gameplay mechanics from the previous sets to just create absolute chaos. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with the game's difficulty being lowered, because to be honest, Thoth is not really that difficult of a game to begin with. Like, I went into this expecting an extreme challenge, something that I would probably be spending at least a couple hours on, but when I played this the first time, I was able to beat it in about a half hour. And after that, I thought, what now? I mean, not only am I disappointed in the game's incredibly short length, I'm kind of disappointed in its lack of difficulty. I don't know, maybe it's just because I have a lot of experience with twin-stick shooters, because I have spent a lot of time playing games like The Binding of Isaac and Geometry Wars, so maybe it's just because I have experience in this particular genre, maybe that's why it's so simple to me. But I can't understand if it is difficult for players who may not be familiar with this particular video game genre, or haven't, like, uh spent any time whatsoever, haven't really gotten the chance to delve into a game of this caliber, then yeah, I guess I could understand it then, you know, just trying to make the game more accessible to newcomers. I mean, even with the second chance mechanic, I still felt like I was having a pretty easy time either way, and honestly, I wouldn't have an issue if the second chance mechanic didn't exist, because the game really isn't that hard. I don't know, I kind of feel like, like the second chance mechanic's a little bit pointless, but that is just my opinion. I do still, uh, I, I definitely like this game for what it is, even if there is not that much to it, but it only costs like $5 on Steam. I'd still say it's worth your 5 bucks. It's still worth that investment. Although if it was priced a little bit higher, then yeah, I'd probably be a little bit pissed. I think $5 is just about the correct asking price for a title of this kind. Art style definitely reminds me of 140 Also, I'm doing... Well, I was about to say I was going- I was doing a, a really good job at avoiding these snakes, but then of course I- I get killed instantly, like right before I even say it. Of course I do. Wait, do I have like some sort of gravitational pull on me? Is that why these guys, like, like float towards me? It's because I'm ex exerting some sort of gravitational force on them. Maybe they don't actually want to come near me, but- but they can't help it, because I- I- I'm like- I'm like too- too powerful. Like the gravity is too strong for them, they can't- they can't over- overcome it. So yeah, I can definitely manipulate their movement like this for sure. Doesn't really appear to have any- any sort of use though. So you might as well just shoot them. Might as well just shoot them. Get the giant snake enemies out here. Yeah, might as well spawn all three of them back in while I- while I'm attempting to uh, end this video here, so... Yeah, I don't really have anything more uh, to say about this guy. Is still a really cool little uh, indie shoot 'em up, twin stick shooter. I don't know. I tend to I tend to refer to twin stick shooters as shoot 'em ups as well. I mean, when you think about it, the genres are pretty closely related to one another. It's a fairly simple twin stick shooter overall. I mean, this has nowhere near the complexity of Geometry Wars, and I mean, Geometry Wars is not the most complex game in the world to begin with. I would say it's certainly not on par with that game or The Binding of Isaac, for that matter. To be fair, it, it, it's it's kind of difficult to accurately gauge who exactly would be interested in a product like this, because, to be honest, it's very niche. Like, the twin-stick shooter genre itself might not be, but a game of this kind, with this sort of art style? I don't know, man. I don't know, I, I'm not entirely sure what, what kind of person would enjoy this, honestly. I guess hardcore twin-stick shooter fans, but I don't think this is something that the general public would enjoy, even if it was published by Double Fine, which, like I said, led by Tim Schafer, one of the most legendary developers in video game history. I mean, of course, the F.A. Carlson is the real mastermind behind whatever the hell this is supposed to be. As these snakes are just bouncing around the screen here, I'm gonna end the video, and I'm now going to refer you guys to some links. If you want to purchase Thoth, there are a couple links in the description. This game is not available on consoles, or mobile devices for that matter, it's only available on PC. I don't believe Carlson has any plans on bringing it to consoles, or at least he doesn't right now. But for now, you can purchase the game on either Steam or Humble. And I do feel like I need to mention this, the Humble link in particular is not uh, affiliated, because I'm not, I'm not a partner with Humble, which means if you decide to purchase this game from the Humble store, I will not be receiving money off of the referral link, because, uh, again, the reason I mention things like that is because some of the websites that I link to, they have these partners 
partner programs, you can choose to opt into them, and sometimes you'll receive money if someone, like a small amount of revenue, if someone clicks on your link, but I always choose to opt out of that stuff because I'd rather not receive money from that. I just like putting in as many links as I can in the description, you know, just, just to give you guys as many alternatives as possible, as many options, because, you know, Steam's not the only digital distribution platform on the market. Even though, in my opinion, it's the best one on the market, but, you know, everyone has different preferences. Thanks for watching, as always, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later!